time to oxidize some sugars, wouldn't you say? <laughs> All right, so in the previous video, I told you how to reduce sugars with sodium borohydride. Now I'm going to show you two instances where you can oxidize a sugar um, with the proper oxidizing agent. So um, choosing here the manopyranose, which once again is in equilibrium with its open chain. One thing that we can do to this six carbon um, aldose sugar is to react it with bromine, elemental bromine in water. So aqueous bromine to be most exact. Um, this is often done at slightly acidic pHs, uh, but the end result is that the aldehyde component will be oxidized exclusively to the carboxylic acid component. And it's kind of a funky type of reaction. Um, but uh, this component where one end is a carboxylic acid and the opposite end is the CH2OH, your primary alcohol, this is known as an aldonic acid, right, which derives from an aldose sugar. So um, this is manopyranose, right? So by the time you get to manose, uh, you drop O's and you replace it with onic acid. So this is mononic acid. All right, so let me show you how this works out. Uh, the mechanism is a tiny bit funky. Um, the first thing is that, you know, in aqueous solution, you have an equilibrium, much like open chain becomes cyclic and cyclic chain becomes open chain. Uh, you have an equilibrium with the open chain aldehyde and water. The water can add nucleophilically to that carbonyl carbon, pushing the electrons to the oxygen initially to this point. Now, typically, what you would see here is that, you know, another water molecule will come in, remove the proton of your protonated water, and then add it onto the oxide to make a gem dial. But that's if the only thing available to you, which is, you know, electrophilic enough, it happens to be just water. But when bromine is in the water, uh, now the situation has changed. The best electrophile available to you is not a proton, but rather the bromine. So when you form this component, your oxide is simply going to attack one of the bromines. You're going to kick out the second bromine as bromide. And what you end up doing is creating an oxygen bromine bond, which is weak and it's reactive. And as you probably already noticed, um, I have already spelled out the CH bond that was always there, right? This is an aldehyde, so we had a CH bond at the beginning. The CH bond was still here. The CH bond is now elucidated uh, ex explicitly on purpose because what's going to happen now is that that OH, or excuse me, that OBR bonds along with the protonated water um, create enough electron withdrawing effect onto this hydrogen to make it acidic enough that um, yeah, you're going to be attacked by the bromine. You're only going to remove the proton, however, so that what that also means is that the CH bond pair of electrons is going to move over to the oxygen exclusively. Uh, well, not exclusively because it's going to be shared between the carbon and the oxygen, but because that oxygen has a weak bond and technically a good living group, the moment this happens, the bromide takes off. And so the end result is that, yes, yeah, you produce HBr, uh, you're producing a bromide, a second bromide equivalent, and at the moment you have a protonated carboxylic acid, which needless to say, your bromide will do the trick of attacking that extra proton, removing it, and turning this into your neutral carboxylic acid. So that's the, the process of how this happens, right? And it will be the same for any, any aldo sugar that you can apply. Now, um, for all intents and purposes, uh, the oxidation is only going to happen with an aldehyde component because you need to have a CH bond on the carbon that's getting oxidized. Uh, so that means that keto sugars uh, will not do this type of reaction. Uh, and yeah, in particular, with just bromine and water, you're not expecting, and slightly acidic pH, you're not exactly expecting this to happen to a huge extent. Uh, but due to enol and enolate conversions, you could have uh, ketose turning into an aldo sugar and undergoing the oxidation anyway. So something to watch out for in the future. Okay, uh, there's a second oxidation that I need to tell you about. Uh, it's not; these are not the only things you can do, by the way. But you know, um, 
from the point of view of synthesis, you know, I want you to be aware of this one. Uh, the second one oxidizes the sugar uh, in the open chain. So once again, you're looking at the equilibrium of taking the cyclic structure back to the open chain structure. And this time around, instead of using bromine and water, uh, which is considered a mild oxidizing agent, uh, now you use dilute nitric acid, right? So the minopyranose in the open chain form is now mannose, but the moment you react it with dilute nitric acid, uh, something interesting happens. First of all, the aldehyde is turned into carboxylic acid, kind of like what we saw with Br2. But in addition to that, the CH2OH on the other extreme of the sugar is also oxidized to a carboxylic acid. Um, and when that happens, right, when you have carboxylic acids on both extremes of the sugar, uh, this is now known as an aldehyde acid. So since this derives from mannose, uh, you drop O's and you replace it with aric acid. So this will be mineric acid. All right, and the mechanism um, that I'm aware of is not very well known, or at least I haven't found a good source for it. So what I'm about to show you is the best interpretation that I think this reaction ought to happen based on just some basic chemical principles and a little bit of intuition, which it could be wrong, so take it with a grain of salt. But um, you could envision that one of the first things that will happen is the nitric acid will protonate your carbonyl oxygen. You know, this we've seen before. So carbonyl oxygen is protonated, the electrons go back to oxygen to make uh, protonated aldehyde and nitrate. Then, and this is one of the very uncommon things, but it is known, so this is not completely out of the question, nitrate can behave as a nucleophile. It's not a gray nucleophile by any means, but you can under certain conditions. So you could envision the nitrate could potentially attack this activated carbonyl and form an alkyl nitrate, as you see right here, right? So attack carbonyl carbon, electrons go back to oxygen, you have now your um, alkyl nitrate. And then here, um, once again, I'm spelling out the CH that you have in there. That CH can then react with uh, water to basically be deprotonated. The electrons of that CH bond will have to move on to that oxygen, basically creating a double bond. And this will kick off, uh, not nitrate, but now uh, reduce nitrate in the form of nitrite. Okay, so you'll have nitrite, um, you'll, you'll have nitrite protonated by hydronium, so ultimately you get nitrous acid and water. And, uh, and then you have that aldehyde component turned into a carboxylic acid. And although I'm not gonna show it in this um, you know, proposal, uh, something similar will happen with the CH2OH. Namely, you will protonate the OH of that CH2OH, and then you'll do a pseudo SN2 reaction with nitrate to kick off the water leaving group. And then once you have nitrate attached to that carbon, then you can undergo the same oxidation that you see right here to form an aldehyde initially. And then that aldehyde can undergo the same type of mechanism that you see right here to get you to the carboxylic acid. So technically, it would be a nine step process, roughly speaking. Okay, but this ought to give you an idea of how this is happening. And I don't wanna show you the whole extent of that reaction because like I mentioned earlier, um, this is my best guess as to how this reaction moves forward. You know, I haven't been able to find a good source or reliable source that depicts this mechanism. Uh, but two things I do know. I know that if you bring a strong acid in the presence of aldehydes, you're going to protonate the oxygen of that aldehyde. And I also do know that alkyl nitrates are actually known where you actually do have a carbon oxygen single bond between those two components so this is not completely you know like voodoo science <laughs> but take it with a grain of salt uh, the important thing though is to be able to tell that if you react your aldo sugar with nitric acid dilute nitric acid uh, you will oxidize positions one and six or the extremes all the way to the carboxylic acid stage Okay, oh, and one more thing I should probably tell you, kind of like the alditols, because the extremes are the same, some sugars will end up having a plane of symmetry in the middle of the molecule. And if that happens, the molecule will become achiral. Now, uh, in the case of maniaric acid, uh, we do not have a plane of symmetry here. So this will remain chiral, but 
just be aware of that, you know, change of potential chirality to no chirality by doing the oxidations or doing the reductions. Okay, so that takes care of the oxidation reactions that I wanted to talk to you about. Um, so in the next video, I'm going to then show you how it is that synthetically speaking, we can actually make sugars from scratch in the laboratory. So I'll see you in that next video. Bye-bye.